See, it's now the third week of January. Oh, my goodness. End of the third week of January. And if you're like me, 2024, has it, has, is it busier than usual, right? It's opened up pretty busy. If you're like me, there's a lot of events, a lot of good things happening in the month of January already. With all the busyness going on, I missed a certain event, and I'm sure you missed this same event. Are you ready for what that event is? I'll give you a clue, okay? Let's put our trivia minds on. Anybody here like trivia? Uh, yeah, me, me too. Anyway, so th- we'll put the trivia minds on. This event happens every second Friday in the month of January. You know what it is? Anybody? Yeah, I missed it too. It's called Quitter's Day. Quitter's Day. Yeah, there's a day for everything. Don't, I don't know who does this. But it's called Quitter's Day, and studies have shown that 80%, there was a study done in, in, in America, 80% of Americans abandon their New Year's resolutions by the second Friday of January. <laughs> what does this mean? It means if you're a gym person, the gym starts to clear out. It means that book that you were journaling in, it, it, it kind of stops right there, and the pages stay like that. It means that you're eating at home, but now we're ordering in, right? And it could be for your spiritual life where you're like, hey, I want to live a life for God. I wanna, I'm devoted to live a life different. It could be that you have started that way, but now your old habits are starting to trickle back in. And the transformed life that you want, that you said the beginning of the year, new year, new me, becomes what? New year, same me. It's same old habits. What happens here? We often adjust our behavior, but we don't change what controls our behavior, our minds. You see, we often put in out of our free will these external behaviors in place, trying to do them, but we don't change our thinking. We don't change what we value. We don't change how we view situations. We don't change our thoughts. And eventually, our old thinking leads us back to old behavior. See, I I, I love uh, Craig Rochelle. He writes a book. It's called Winning the War in Your Mind. I highly recommend it. And he he has this quote there that has, has continuously got me thinking. He says this, your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. The old proverb, what is, how does it go? It says, what a man thinketh, so he is. And Paul says, a renewed mind is a transformed life. And that's what God wants for all of us. And we see, just to give a little bit of context, we see this transformed life by a renewed mind in the life of Apostle Paul. If you don't know his story, if you're new to the church and you don't know the story of Apostle Paul who wrote this this book, I'll tell you, his mind was not like the mind of Christ before he met Jesus. His mind was against anyone and anything that believed in Jesus. He was so convinced in his mind that they were wrong, he started to persecute those who carried Jesus. He started to kill Christians. That was his thinking. He participated in the, in, in the stoning of the first martyr, Stephen. You see, that's who, who, who's writing this letter. But then all of a sudden, my friends, how good is the gospel? He encounters Jesus. And the gospel literally stops him in his tracks. And the mercy of God comes to him. And Jesus, we know from the scriptures that all of a sudden Jesus himself reveals himself to Paul. And he sits at the feet of Jesus. And over time, his mind is being renewed. And now the great persecutor is one of the greatest apostles that we know. Because his mind was changed. The one who is known as the the one who praises in prisons. He's the one who's known, who has found the secret to contentment in much and little. He's the one who has joy in real suffering. 
He, he, he has renewed his mind. That's who's writing to the Romans, who's saying, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this transformation, I'll tell you, isn't just the, transfer, the, the testimony of Paul, but it's the testimony of every disciple of Jesus who has surrendered their truth, surrendered their thinking, surrendered their ways to Jesus. It's a, it's a testimony of every disciple who have said, Jesus, have it your way. Change my mind. I want to be a learner, a follower of you who are living a new life because Jesus has renewed their mind. It's the transformation that God wants to do in every one of you here today. So I, I want us to dig deeper. Let's dig deep into what Paul teaches the Romans about being transformed so we too can be transformed. And I want to encourage you with, in two things we need to do with our minds to experience this transformation. And the first thing I want to encourage you in is this. Take back your mind from the world. It's interesting that in our key text, before Paul says, be transformed, he tells the Romans what? Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. So uh, some of you were at the, the workshop yesterday, the seminar. Let's geek it out, okay? Let's look at the original language. Let's look at the Greek, and we'll find more about what, what Paul is saying. You see, the word he uses there, do not, it's written in the present tense. And that means that it means continually do it, continually refuse to do it or stop doing it if you start it. The word conform in the Greek, it's systematizo, which means to, to, to assume similar outward form, to follow the same patterns. That's why the NIV translates it like that. Then he uses the word world, which is not world like we look at, but it's aeon, which, which means the age. So once you piece it all together, what is Paul really saying? He's saying, continually refuse or stop if you're already doing this. Continually refuse from adopting the fleeting fashions, adopting the behavior of this age. In other words, don't follow what culture is telling you is approved and true and allowing it to shape your behavior. You see, the Roman city was full of sin and he flags to them, don't be deceived. God calls you to live different, to be set apart from this age. And it's not just for the Romans, my friends, but it's for the believers of God, the children of God, the citizens of heaven. We are not to live adopting the fleeting fashions of this age. And he says it again to the Ephesians in the Ephesian church. Look what he says in Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. He says, so I tell you this. And insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. Look at this, verse 22. You were taught within regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, the church of today, I want to echo it to you as well. Don't be conformed. Don't allow culture to shape you, but live different. And I know sometimes living different, it comes with persecution. It comes with sometimes being weird. It comes with sometimes people judging you. But my friends, we, we can't be so concerned with looking like the world because my friends, we are to look like Jesus. 
That's who we're to look like. We're to look like Jesus. I like culture. See, the age we live in, my friends, let us bring it to the reality that the age we live in is not governed by God, but it's governed by our sinful desires. An age that is consumed with having more but giving less. An age, my friends, that, 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 that doesn't, it chases happiness. Why? Because it doesn't know the joy that they can have through suffering. It's, it's an age that, that is self-governed. It's, it's all about me. It's an age that, that forgiveness is optional. Humility is false. It's an age, my friends, where, where it, it, it's searching for love, but it finds it in temporary pleasures leading to long-term pain. It's an age without God. And I'm not saying all these things to make us sad about the world we live in, but to open our minds to the reality to not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed into the image and like God. See, don't let your desire be to rise to the top of a broken world. It's, it's, and it's hard. We can say it, but it's, it's so hard to not be conformed. Why? I'll tell you why. Number one, why? Because we have an adversary. We have opposition. We have someone who is working against us, who wages war, who tries to deceit us, tempt us, who tries to conform our behavior. We have an enemy, and his name is the devil, who deceives us. And who does it all in your mind? You see, as soon as you make that decision to, I want to follow God, I want to, I want to obey him, I'll tell you he'll come and he'll try to deceive you. He'll try to tempt you away from offering your life fully to God, never controlling you or forcing you because the devil has no power over the children of God. But he lies and he deceives your mind, and he tries to, to get you to follow his way. Look at Jesus, how he describes the devil in John 8, when he's talking to people who are not accepting his words as truth. He says this, you belong to your father, the devil, and you wanna carry out your father's desires. And he describes him here, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Somebody say, the devil is a liar. Put that in the chat. We have to know this. We have to know our adversary, our opponent, because we need to be alert. We need to be of sober mind because the devil is real, and the area he is attacking you, my friends, is in your mind. And he says all these lies to you. He says all these things trying to tempt you, trying to conform you. He says these lies that try to entice you to destructive habits. He, he, he says these things like, oh, you know, one more night of pornography, that's okay. It's not going to hurt anyone. Your wife, she's so busy. She's not tending to your needs. One more night of pornography, that won't hurt. Try, try, try to tell you, like, your drinking's not affecting anybody. You're okay. Just, you had a hard day. People understand. You, you, you can smoke away. You can drink away. You, you could, he, he, he lies to you. He tries to say all these things. Oh, it was a tough day today. Yeah, you're in debt, but let's go shopping. Let's just, let's, you deserve it. Add to cart. Check out. You deserve to feel good. You're sad. And, and he says to you what? He says, you're sad, but you know what would make you happy? You're not hungry, but we can go to sushi right now. <laughs> right now. And we try to, we indulge in all these things, trying to find happiness. He's, he's trying to entice your desires. He, he says all these lies to your mind, attacking your worth. He says, no one's going to love you. You're going to stay at the bottom. You're not talented. Don't even try to apply for that job. Don't even, don't even think about doing that. That, that. that girl's not going to give you any attention. Look how you look. 
Like, he tries to attack your worth. He attacks you even in your relationships. He says, they don't deserve forgiveness. Don't forgive them. You got to look out for yourself. You don't need to give. You don't need to reconcile. All that stuff, don't believe in that. You got to look out for yourself. To the devil, he says all of these lies to try to conform us to, to doing things his way. And I'll tell you, it's so hard. Why? Because he has more access than ever to our minds. How? Through this little device right here. Right here. More than ever, he has access to our minds. Where we're not, you know, casually experiencing culture. But culture is literally pushed to us forced to us, where all of a sudden we're consuming all of these things that are impacting and filling how we think, how we view things, our mind, videos, TikToks, Netflix, all these reels, Spotify, all these things where the majority of the content, my friends, is not made for your good, but it's literally made to modify your behavior for the good of someone else. See, all of this in this little phone where false truths somehow are echoed and echoed and echoed. We're strangers who have no business to have influence in your life. Now shape how you get ready in the morning. Now shape how you, sh how you should vote, how you should decide on all these different things. All of this all within here. And, I, and I'm telling you, I'm not against social media, first of all. I'm not, a, I'm not saying it's all bad, there, but there is a lot of bad out there. See, we need to be wise. The phone, the first thing we look at in the morning, the last thing we look, out, look at before we go to bed, it's with us in the bathroom, kind of gross, but it's with us in the bathroom, it's with us when we're grieving, it's with us when we're happy, it's with us when we're vulnerable, it's with us when we don't want anyone to talk with us, it's still there with us. It has access to every piece of our mind, slowly but surely conforming us to the patterns of this world. See, we, we have to be wise. There was a study done by StatsCan. It was, they, were, they released it, and they said it was done in 2021 for adults over the age of 15. So it said 30%. 37% of adults consumed more than four hours of screen time a day. 35% is two to four hours. See, my friends, we need to be wise. Because more than ever, the devil has access. We give him this access to our minds. And, 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 and we have to, more than ever, take, take this seriously. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. It's become harder but my friends, let me tell you, it's not impossible. Can I encourage you today that it's not impossible that God is with you and his spirit resides in you. The spirit that overcame death, hell, and the grave is with you. I want to encourage you today, those who feel defeated, you have full control over your minds through Christ Jesus. You do. You can't buy into that lie. You have control over your minds through Christ Jesus. The devil in this world does not have control. It can lie, but he doesn't have control. So take back your mind from this world. Don't be conformed, but be transformed. See, I'm sounding the alarm today because there's so many people who come to me and it's a, they're, they're, they have a battle in their minds. And, and I, and I wanna just make us aware as a church family that we can overcome. Through Christ Jesus, we can overcome. We have to be wise. We have to open our minds. We, we have to see how the devil is moving even in this age. Take back your mind. It's not too late. If it wasn't too late for a Christian killer, it's not too late for you. God can do all things. He can change any mind. He can change anyone. Don't give up. So take back your mind from the world. But let me tell you, taking, your back, taking back your mind from the world doesn't transform you. We take back our mind from the world, then submit it to God. You see, that's what transforms you. 
submitted your mind to God. See, our minds that were once filled with the truth of this age and the world and all these things are now to be filled by him and his word, filled with God's truth. His truth fully accepted then changes our life. It changes how we think. It changes our character, our habits. It changes and transforms how we live. I want, you, I want to be very clear. I want you to hear this, that it's not your strength and it's not your wisdom that will transform you. But it is the power of the word of God and the power of his spirit that will transform you. And that should give us great hope because it's him who transforms. It's him who renews. The word transform in the Greek is metamorpho, which means change after being with. See, a change that happens from the inside out after being with God. You see, we are meant to be completely changed by God. PJ talked about last week the dead sacrifices, they put it on the altar. And I'll tell you, those dead sacrifices didn't keep their same form, but they were burned up from the inside out. You, you, they were unrecognizable. They were burned up, completely changed. In the same way, us as living sacrifices, as we come before God, we are burned up by the Holy Spirit changed and transformed, unrecognizable. But it's from being with him that changes us. A transformation, it says, do not be conformed. It's written in the present to continually over and over be transformed as we continually over and over and over spend time with Jesus day and night, night and day, him changing us every single day. It's not an event, it's a lifestyle where he is transforming us day by day as we live with him. A transformation that comes from saying, God, I give you not just my heart, I give you not just my worries and my fears and my doubts, but I also give you my mind. I also allow you to shape how I think, shape what I value, shape what is true. I love you, Lord, with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind. That's what it says, the greatest commandment, Mark 12, says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. See, as you give it to God, he renews it. He gives you a new mind and transforms you to be more like him. But it's up to you to offer your mind. It's up to you to submit your mind to God. So how do we do that? I'll tell you the first thing. You have to intentionally fill your mind with the truth, God's truth. You see, submitting your, your, submitting your mind to God means intentionally seeking out and filling your mind with his truth and the revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit. The word of God won't magically appear in your mind when you raise your hand and give your life to Christ. You, you, you repeat that prayer and you ask God to come in your heart, the word of God won't then just magically appear. But we have to submit our minds and intentionally grow in the knowledge of God. That's what it means to be a disciple, a true follower, a learner of the way of Jesus. And this requires, it's hard to do because it requires great humility. Yeah. Because we, especially those who are mature in their age, you have to unlearn everything you thought was true to receive the truth of God. You have to empty yourself of your truth and your way, and you have to allow God to now tell you his way, embrace his truth. That's what Jesus says in Matthew 9. When he's teaching his disciples new things, what does he say? He says, you can't fill uh, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. They will literally burst. It's the same thing. You can't hold your truth and then hold the truth of God. You have to let go of your truth and receive the truth of God even when it offends you, even when it goes against what you think. That, that is embracing the truth, and it's, it takes great humility. Well, well, but pastor, I'm set in my ways. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You hear that phrase? And it's true. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. See, my friends, but that's why the gospel calls us 
to be born again. The old life is gone. And in the new life, I am a child of God. And my way is no longer my way, but my way is his way. And I grow in his knowledge, in his truth. I am born again. The old has gone and the new has come. So we need to grow in our faith, fill your mind with his truth, and follow his way. I'll tell you, we've been reading the Bible. Don't read the Bible just for the sake of reading the Bible. But read it to understand who God is. Don't read the Bible just seeking what you want it to say. But what does it actually say about God? Meditate on it. Let it challenge you. Let it offend you. Let it shape your thoughts and your actions. You'll do it. You'll find as you do it, as it's your lifestyle, as you continue in it, as it's every day, God, renew my mind with your truth, your life starts to change. It starts to change. And that is... That's what happens. You start to hear the voice of God more clearly. The Spirit of God starts to pull on Scripture to guide your life, to convict you, to train you, to grow you. Your prayer life starts to change. Why? Because you know more of who you're talking to. You know more about God and who He is. You live a different life because of His Word. Because his word sets us free. His word aligns us. His word challenges us. It tells us not what we want to hear. It tells me what I need to hear every single day. It overcomes every lie. His word sustains. It gives life. It, it changes my perspective. This book, my friends, is not a self-help book with good people writing good ideas so you can be a good person. No, my friends, this is the divinely inspired word of God that brings life into everything, sustains us, nourishes us. It is alive and active, sharper than any double double-edged sword so allow it to pierce your heart allow it to judge your thoughts allow it to judge your mind it's the Word of God grow in the knowledge of God John 8 31 to 32 to the to the Jews who had believed him Jesus said if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It'll set you free from things that you didn't even know were enslaving you. See, it's his word, the spirit that sanctifies us and transforms us. Look what Jesus prays over his disciples in John 17. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. He says, sanctify them. Set them apart. Make them different. Make them holy. How? By the truth. By the word of God. Not sanctify them by their church attendance. Not sanctify them by their good works. But sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. See, I want to encourage us as a family we need to break out this year of not growing up in the knowledge of God. We have to break out, my friends, out of giving God our heart, giving God our desires, but not giving him our mind. That is loving God. It's giving him also your mind. Allowing him to shape you, fill your mind, and your life will change. Psalm 1, 1 to 3, blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. Look at this. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. So fill your mind. Be intentional this year. Fill your mind with the truth of God. The other thing, when you submit your mind to God, not only are you filling it, but we have to guard it. Guard your mind. See, when you're filling your mind, submitting it to God, we have to know that the devil still will come and attack. He still will try to deceive you. 
Guard it your mind, well, I'll tell you, will first entail, we talked about it, limiting access to what's filling your mind. Limiting the things that are not good coming into your mind. We have to put those boundaries up to, so that those influences, whether it be the phone or people, they're, they're not influencing us in the wrong way. Guard your mind. So you know what I, I what kind of, I've been thinking about and, and I've been pondering over we are so firm. We are so firm with, with intentionally putting filters up for our children and youth about the content or influences they have in their life. We tell them, you cannot have this come in because it's bad for you. You cannot have this come into your mind because it will, it will affect you. But my friends, if it is wrong, it is wrong for all the ages. You see, sometimes we take off the filters for ourselves desensitizing us to the very things that are working away and chipping away at our soul. I want to encourage you, my friends, put the guards back up. Put the filters back on. Guard your mind. Just like we don't allow junk and garbage to enter into the minds of our teens and our, youth, our young people, don't let it enter into your minds. Put the filters back up. Do not be conformed but be transformed. See, my friends, look what it says, in, in, Paul says in Romans 16, 9, at the end of this verse, it says, but I want you to be wise about what is good and what? Innocent about what is evil. Don't compromise. See, having boundaries in our life and living a life free from sin is better than living a life with no boundaries, a slave to sin. We have to be okay again with putting those filters up, guarding our mind, limit access, but also fight back. You see, the devil will also lie to you. The, the devil will come and he will tempt you. And just like he came and tempted Jesus, you remember that? Matthew 4 in, in the Gospels. When, just like he tempted Jesus, he will come and try to tempt you. But the devil is not wise. He uses the same lie over and over again. He uses the same temptation. So we have to be wise. We have to stand on guard. We have to equip ourselves with the truth. Fight back with the word of God. See, the way that Jesus fought the devil was that he demolished the argument of the devil with the word of God, quoting scripture. We as well, my friends, as we grow in the knowledge of God, we have to fight back with truth. See, the lies that come, we fight back with truth. I want to share a personal story. And uh, in this story, uh, well, I myself, growing up, a lot of my life, I struggled. And there were these moments, I would, personally, I'll tell you, I was not, I was overweight. I had a lot of acne and uh, all this stuff. I was bullied as a kid. And for a lot of my life, even my young adult life, I struggled with my image. And you start to tell yourself these horrible things. And you start to tell yourself, like, no one's going to love you. Nobody cares about you. Look how you look today. You, like, try to avoid the mirror. You try to avoid all these things. You don't want to look at pictures and all this stuff. The devil consistently like tells you all these things. And even if other people, you could be like, oh, pastor, how could you think that way? But it's the lies that are happening in here that are hard. And it was like, it's like you find your home in that place. Like the lie becomes your home. You start to, it starts to, you start to live in it. It's like almost creates these walls around you. The Bible says it's like a stronghold. And as I grew in my faith, I realized that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because the Bible tells me that I was made in the image of God, that I'm a child of God. In Psalm 139, it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am knit in my mother's womb. And as I grew in the knowledge of God, I started to change my mind and start talking back to the devil. And, and it takes some time sometimes I, you know, I know there's a lot of people f facing different things. It takes time, you just, but you just have to keep standing on the truth. 
Resist the devil and he will flee. Keep standing. Keep telling yourself the truth. Even if you don't believe it, even if it's hard, I'm gonna, this is the word of God. It has power. It has, and over time, I'll tell you, that lie started to fade away. And my mind started to be renewed. I want to encourage you today. It's so easy to find your home in these lies. It's so easy to just accept it as true and just live there. But my friends, you have power through the word of God. There is a truth that can set you free. And the Bible says is that, yeah, we create this strongholds around us by living in it. But I want to encourage you, fight back. Because you have the power of God. You know, at those times, you need to know the word. And, and, and if you don't know the word, get people around you who know the word, who can help you. Get people around you to, to, to talk through these things that they will help you get over these things. Fight back. So oftentimes, we don't fight back. We live in those lies. But for every lie, there is truth. And for every temptation, there is a way out. So be on guard. Fight with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I want to encourage you with 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. It says, for though we live in the war, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You see, what lie is the Satan speaking in your life? Is it about your marriage? Is it about your worth? Is it about your future? Is it about this temptation? Use the truth that overcomes and has power to demolish every stronghold. Fight back with the word of God. Fight back with the word of God. You take that thought captive that holds itself against the knowledge of God and you make it obedient to Christ. That is the power we have. So be on guard. Take your place. Fight back. As I close today, I want to tell you God desires for us to be transformed. Not to live the same, but from the inside out, be transformed. To being more like him. The question I want to ask you is, will you give your minds to him? Will you commit to growing in the knowledge of God? Will you take those steps to say, God, renew my mind. Change every thought. I want to overcome every lie. And we're here to walk with you too. Pastors, leaders, we're here to help you. Because I know sometimes it takes a long time. But this transformation is not overnight. It's a lifestyle. But we want to walk with you and help you. But take back your minds and submit it to God. As living sacrifices, may it, we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. My friends, new mind is a new life.